what I want to do in this lesson is talk about one simple question, and that is to what extent does the US Constitution protect civil liberties in the USA? So we're going to be just looking at the arguments for this proposition and the arguments against this proposition. How are civil liberties protected in the USA? And the question is, for a start, what are civil liberties? And these are generally just referred to as um, civil rights or human rights or general rights and freedoms and protections that um, that are incurred onto individuals. So we could just sort of talk about sort of general rights, general rights and protections protections afforded to individuals afforded to individuals now I'm sure this isn't the exact definition um, dictionary definition but this is a general idea of what civil liberties in the USA refers to and we can think about a number of different things related to civil liberties so things like freedom of speech freedom of the press, freedom of religion, right to a fair trial, and even the more controversial ones such as the right to bear arms in the United States, etc, etc. So how does the US Constitution protect these liberties? So there are a few arguments to suggest that it does, and it has a very strong um, case for protecting civil liberties in the USA. And the first one is just the existence of the Bill of Rights. So we, as we know, the Bill of Rights um, consists of the first ten amendments of the U.S. Constitution, and is uh, protects a number of civil liberties. So things like the right to a fair trial, things like um, the freedom from cruel and, and inhumane treatment and punishment, um, the freedom um, of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of expression, the right to bear arms. Okay, uh, even the Third Amendment, which is the right not to have soldiers quartered into your in your property, which is quite a uh, uh, quite a niche esoteric one and what's important as well is these are amendments to the US Constitution which means that they have the entrenched nature uh, just like the US Constitution does because the US Constitution is codified it's set out in one single document the US Constitution exists as uh, the sovereign um, legal aspect of the United States um, system of governance and so because it's an entrenched um, uh, and because this represents higher law and because the um, amendment process of the US Constitution is very difficult to achieve, this means that the rights that are set out in the Bill of Rights are very clearly entrenched and codified within the US system. And it allows, like we've mentioned, the rights, uh, for, uh, the, sorry, the protection of a number of rights. So things like the freedom of expression. So the freedom of expression, the freedom of religion, the right to a fair trial, and also things like the Tenth Amendment when it comes to the rights of states in relation to the federal government. These rights can also be expanded upon because we have also a Supreme Court that has the ability to apply systems of judicial review to decide whether or not um, to decide whether or not a, a, a an ordinary law, a normal piece of legislation or policy that is enacted by Congress is constitutional, falls in line with the, the, the will of the, the US Constitution. And this has led to a number of extensions, like to what extent can we argue that something um, exists under the right to a fair trial or the right to freedom of expression. And there are a number of cases that we could think about here. So we've got the Topeka case here when it comes to the right for um, desegregated education. Obviously, you have Roe v. Wade, which is the um, you know the right to an abortion case, and then you also have the Hodges case, which is relates to the right to um, same-sex marriage and the protection of um, uh, and civil liberties within that regard. Now, a contrast to that. By contrast, you would argue that some rights are better protected than others. Okay. Now, there are some rights that may or may not exist within the U.S. Constitution, and you can talk, for example, about the fact that the right to bear arms is a heavily, um, is a heavily protected right, and this, because of the nature of its um, politicization in, the, in recent years, the right to bear arms may or may not um, infringe on a number of other rights, such as the right to life um, from the General Universal Declaration of Human Rights, seen as... Um, you know, we have a number of cases where in a seeming, uh, it is seemingly the case that the right to bear arms um, has 
been overprotected, whereas other rights have been underprotected. And this really go, gets to the heart of the the gun debate within the United States, the, the extent to which, um, you know, firearms should be allowed and, and how they should be allowed and how they should be regulated within the US. Another problem is that since the amendment process is very difficult, it has the added benefit of making it difficult to infringe on rights that already exist, but it also makes it difficult to adopt new measures. Because the United States, just like any country, um, changes over time. To what extent can we really say that the United States, um, the reflection of the Constitution within the United States back when it began, is really indicative of the United States today? The United States has changed significantly over the years. And so if we have a, an amendment process that's so difficult, it might be difficult to enact um, new amendments to add protections to individuals and to civil liberties. The third option is that the Supreme Court, while it can interpret the rights of individuals, for example, you know, Brown v. Board of, uh, of, of Education of Topeka and also Roe v. Wade, the ideology of the Supreme Court, because of the politicised nature of the Supreme Court being something that is, a, uh, you know, justices that are appointed by the president, this can change the ideology of the Supreme Court. And you might have a situation where um, 30 years ago the Supreme Court affirmed a particular, uh, a particular action and particular um, civil right and today might uh, want to um, redact that particular right. The best example we can talk about when it comes to the Supreme Court and its views on a number of issues is the abortion debate. So abortion rights. So don't forget we have Roe v. Wade in I believe 1973. So we have Roe v. Wade. I'm just going to put 1970s because I'm not 100% sure. Oops, not 1700s. Uh, Roe v. Wade, that would be very progressive. Roe v. Wade in 1970s. OK, this affirmed the right to uh, an abortion as falling under, I believe, the 14th Amendment. OK, and we have the um, protection of abortion enshrined in law um, by the US Supreme Court. However, to what extent is this something that's going to be upheld when we get to the modern era, when we get to 2021? To what extent does the Supreme Court now, with its um, relative abundance of conservative judges, you've obviously got um, Chief Justice Roberts, you've got Judge Kavanaugh, you've got Judge um, Gorsuch, um, uh, Thomas, and also people like Amy Coney Barrett as well, and, and, and new members of the Supreme Court, um, new Trump appointments to the Supreme Court. To what extent, if a challenge to Roe v. Wade is presented, something that is actually being... Um, um, pushed for in some southern states like Alabama and Texas if a challenge to Roe v. Wade is presented to the Supreme Court is appealed all the way up to the Supreme Court to what extent will the Supreme Court uphold the ruling from the 1970s in Roe v. Wade if it doesn't then it overturns a very vital protection of, of women's rights when it comes to abortion and this is something that could be problematic because to what extent are your civil rights, if they are protected by the Supreme Court, actually safe in the future? So we know that it's, um, you know, the rights uh, that are enshrined in the Bill of Rights are pretty much, you know, solid and set in stone. But to what extent are they going to be set in stone when it comes to rights that the Supreme Court has? Another very good example of this is the case of Texas v. Johnson. Texas v. Johnson. Um, so Texas v. Johnson is the famous flag burning case where they, someone was prosecuted for burning the American flag. Now, to what extent would a Supreme Court in 2021, a, a quite a heavily um, conservative Supreme Court, uphold this ruling? That's something that we need to talk about, something that needs to be thought about. And so, yeah, therefore, we have a situation where the Supreme Court can overturn previously granted civil rights, which can be problematic. So this is really how we can think about the debate when it comes to civil liberties in the United States. Civil liberties do have a number of very strong protections in terms of the Bill of Rights and in terms of the way in which the Supreme Court can grant expansions to these civil liberties in, under cases like um, Roe v. Wade and Brown versus Topeka. 
However, there are a number of counter arguments. The constitution is difficult to amend, so it's difficult to adapt to the new modern society that we live in. The Supreme Court changes in terms of its ideology. So to what extent can these early cases um, be said to be protected by a Supreme Court that changes over time?